This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice test for Objective 5.1, Create Charts. Let's get started. Charts are a very important part of understanding and using Excel on a daily basis. It's, it's one thing to be able to organize or create the data, but if you can't effectively communicate that to uh, to coworkers or to clients, it's really going to hand handicap your ability to move forward professionally. So I'm going to go through the tasks that are required here, and then I'm going to spend a little bit of extra time on these, uh, give you a few tips to help take your charts from uh, passable to uh, let's call it let's call it at least average. Uh, level here. So uh, with our 5.1 workbook open, we're going to go on to our Seattle worksheet, which is the first week worksheet, and we want to add a 2D pie chart on this worksheet. Uh, this can be fairly straightforward, and most of the times Excel will get this right. So all we need to do is select a cell in the range that we want to create a chart. We'll go to insert, and then here is our pie chart icon. We'll click that. We'll select a 2D pie chart. And there we go. So that is very similar to what's in uh, the final result that we want uh, and shown in the example file. Uh, to get it all the way, um, one thing we can do here is resize this. And now it'll have that same title. So all I did is this, what's in this uh, maroon colored box is the, the title. And by moving that from just the day cell all the way up to the row one in column B there. Now it's actually going to pull in all the data that's up in that section. So now it reads air quality index, Seattle, uh, Washington, and days, all of the information that's here. So I believe this is what they have in the textbook for you. Uh, I want to show you a couple things. Um, I'm not a huge fan of pie charts, but I'll show you a couple little tools that, are, uh, that you can use with them. Um, by double clicking on this, we get this format option area here. I'm going to make this a little bit easier here. Uh, and so one thing that we can do is we can rotate this. So if we don't want it lined up in this order, we can switch it around here. So if I switch it to 90 degrees, now it's sideways to where it was before. I can go to 180 degrees. And, and, and now it's upside down from where we started with. Um, I can just type in a number if we want rather than selecting. So by typing in 270, now we're three quarters of the way around, or I can go back to zero. Uh, so a few options we have here. Um, point explosion, all this does is this is going to separate uh, some of our slices for us. So we can do that uh, item by item if we wanted to uh, and and make them stand out, um, or we could do it average for the whole the whole thing, but we'll do this, Let's put it back to where it began. So that is our uh, Seattle worksheet here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is go on to our sales worksheet and do a simple two-dimensional column chart. So you will probably do a lot more column charts uh, than pie charts, at least I hope so. Um, so here is our range, and all we need to do is again, if we click in any item in the range, we can go to our insert. Here is our column chart selector, and we will go to a 2D column chart. So when we get this, we will get this uh, wonderfully, uh, I guess even this would be probably an average chart. Uh, when we go to the next video, you're, you're gonna see what an, a below average chart would look like. Uh, and so this shows us all of the items that are in our table here as well as a vertical column indicating the magnitude, or in this case, the amount of sales. Um, so normally in my title, I would want to include what this is. Um, and now I guess it doesn't tell us, so but I want to know, is this annual sales? Is this monthly sales? Uh, and have that in a, in a title. So that, that effectively wraps up what you're uh, responsible to do. Um, a couple things I would do, you know, bare minimum on a chart like this. Um, one thing is you always want to get rid of any spurious or unneeded information uh, to help clarify what's important in this chart. And, and what is important? Well, what's important is the magnitude of the sales here. So some things we can do to, to make this a little bit less uh, uh, visually bulky is, for example, whether the sales number was 2,500 or 2,500 and zero, zero cents doesn't really matter. So the first thing I would do 
is I would get rid of those decimal places. So um, we have our access uh, formatting over here. If that wasn't present, all you need to do is go into where your access is, double click it, and that will pop back up for you. Uh, so what we can go down to here is the numbers option. Okay, and when I go into the numbers option, it asks me how many decimal places I want. So I'm gonna type zero. All right, so now my plot area has automatically been enlarged and there's now less visual clutter on the side here. Now, if we wanted to, we could go even further than that. Uh, so I'm gonna go here to this column icon where it says numbers. Uh, let's go, actually we'll go to access options. So what I'm looking for is display units here. So right now it says none. So it's showing me the same magnitude of units as what's in the original table. But again, look at all these wasted zeros. We don't really need those. What I can do is select hundreds. And so now it tells me that that, that is a, a hundreds column. Uh, so that this is 10 hundred, 15 hundred, uh, that would be 2000 or 2500. Uh, again, less wasted space. I can make my important information, this visual columns, uh, more prominent by getting rid of that. Uh, we can increase the size here. So those are just a couple quick things you can do that make your chart a little bit uh, more impactful, a little bit quicker for your reader to understand. Uh, stay tuned for part two. We'll go through the rest of the objectives in this chapter. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.